and welcome back boys and girls for yet again another special edition of the Michael Deacon program. I'll be joined by a very, very special guest by the name of Mr. Robert Stanley in just a moment here. He is the author of Close Encounters on Capitol Hill and Covert Encounters in Washington, D.C. Robert has traveled to more than 50 countries during his lifelong pursuit of modern and ancient mysteries. Robert's quest for unique ideas and information has led him to research and report on many controversial topics. His work has been featured on radio, print, television, and of course, the World Wide Web. Now, without further ado, let's bring in Mr. Robert Stanley. And join me right now, not live in real time, recorded, but we are live in your hearts. Join me right now is Mr. Robert Stanley. How's it going, Robert? Good, Michael. Thanks for having me back on. Yeah, welcome back to the program. I hope you're doing well and always good over here in Southern California. And that, of course, that really uh, depends on where you live. Yeah, well, I'm in Southern Florida, and but I was born and raised in Southern California, so I'm kind of missing it. Um because when it's good, it's great, you know, as far as I'm concerned. I, yeah. I don't mind the earthquakes, fires, and floods, and drought. That's right. <laughs> That's yeah, you don't miss seasons. that. Exactly. And, of course, <laughs> the, the rolling blackouts that we have out here. Oh, I, yeah, I know. That's getting worse, huh? It's getting pretty bad, and that happened during a live show a few weeks ago now. Wow. Yeah, that happened. I thought, oh, great, the invasion is happening finally. <laughs> yeah. But there is some truth to that. I mean, we have talked about a sort of global episode where the power goes out and the internet yeah. goes down, all everything. Yeah, the, the three days of darkness, some people call that. And uh, I mean, it's, it's a very interesting scenario. Obviously, we'll never know until we get there. If, in fact, it happens, I kind of hope it doesn't. Um, it, it, you know, the thing is, we got to live our lives day by day. And it's, instead of worrying about what may come, I mean, it, I, I'm, I do prep, but my, come on, man, I can't just live my life constantly, you know, for, for fearing the worst is cut to cut yet to come. <laughs> it's, it, it can be very debilitating. It can be very exhausting. Yeah. Emotionally and physically. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And, and you, you said you were a prepper of sorts so that does that mean you have the whole prepackaged food going on? <laughs> yeah. Things that taste like cardboard. Well, I mean, some of them do and others are a little better, but yeah, I mean, if you're really hungry, anything tastes good. Cause I, I mean, if you, like if you fast for a couple of days or yeah, that's you true. Eat something, it just enhances the flavor. Like it's amazing. Yeah. Anything definitely does uh, taste better when you're starving and even food that uh, doesn't really have much flavor like certain MREs out there that's what we're mm. referring to they sometimes sometimes taste uh, awful and I've tasted quite a few of them mm. well I couldn't say that I'm a connoisseur but yeah uh, right yeah, why would obviously, you <laughs> well the, no because it's this stuff so we my wife and I bought this incrementally uh some of these things and um yeah, you got to try right. it to see if it's any good before you buy a quantity of it. Yeah, I feel like most people out there probably don't. And they spend all kinds of money in this. And once something finally bad happens and they get that chance to eat that, yeah, yeah they're not going to be too happy. Well, the other thing is you got to have water right. and or water filtrations. And it's it's endless. The, the stuff that you need supposedly to survive in a crisis like that is uh, – I don't know that anybody is ever fully going to be prepared for something like that. I don't think I would be. Um, but, you know, if it makes you feel better right now, fine. But if it's only adding to the paranoia – this is the thing uh, – talk radio, a lot of talk radio. Is, yeah. um, you got gold, guns, and uh, dried food and all that stuff. Right. And it, it can only take you so far, and that's <laughs> why <clears> – <throat> that's why I wrote this article um, – the art of spiritual warfare. Right. And uh, it's not, hold on a sec. It's not my idea. Oh, God, I'm losing my voice. Hold on. Oh, no. Have you been yelling? I probably should be yelling a lot more than I do. Oh, wow. Um, anyway, spiritual warfare is, is a lot of people talk about it. You know, it's a spiritual battle we're in. And I agree, but I'm not sure that they fully understand the the details and unless you've been there I, the thing is we're all on the battlefield but we don't know it because we can't see it and i believe that's by design 
So the one of the things that I have in that article is a link to a book about spiritual warfare. And the reason I even found that was I was listening to an interview with a man who's deceased now named Tom Horn. And I'm sure a lot of your listeners know who he is, but I'm, I don't really follow his work that closely. I mean, I, I know who he is, but um, I heard him talking about a scenario uh -huh. that he experienced that was so similar to what I experienced in Malibu back in uh, September 1985 when that boy ran into a glass sliding glass door, damn near bled to death. He uh, Tom Horn describes in this book, Spiritual Warfare, um, how he was at a church meeting and afterwards they went out to the parking lot and this woman came up, a young lady came up to him and in his opinion, he, she looked a little nuts and he said she was, he, she looked like she was on drugs. All right. And he, he, he wasn't really, he wasn't really in a mood for it. I think he was tired or something, whatever. He, he just kind of wasn't too happy about the fact that she was insisting that he come to cross the parking lot to where her boyfriend was sitting in the car. Apparently the boyfriend had been, even though he was really very drugged out, was mum muttering the directions on how to get to this church parking lot while she was driving. And he didn't get out of the car, but she did. And she went over and um, apparently knew to, to go directly to Tom Horn and tell him, you got to help my boyfriend. So, Tom's there with a group of people from the church, and now they're all curious, so they walk over to the car. Tom opens the door, looks at the man. He's He's got blood on, splattered on his face. He's really a mess. And I think he said something like he felt like there was a real darkness. Uh, uh, before he even opened the door, he could just feel there was something wrong. And um, it scared him, and he said something like, Christ, help me, or something to the effect of that. I forget the exact words, but it was, it was really interesting because when he he touched the man, said, "Can I help you?" He, he the man was clearly possessed and um, said he was going to kill Tom. Well, I mean, and now at this point, Tom had already backed up and was literally um, he wanted to run. He said, "But before he could even imagine that yeah. himself run, and where are you going to run to?" But on the right, parking yeah. lot. <laughs> I believe this is in the daytime too. It's it, he didn't say this, but I, I mean, obviously it was clear enough. Everybody could see everybody as well as going on because what happened next is it's just nuts. The man got out of the car and um, was yelling at Tom, "I'm going to kill you, man of God," or something, whatever he man said. Man of and, God. Yeah, I think it was that. And he and he he sprinted toward as he's sprinting towards Tom, he hit something that was invisible to everyone there. And literally collapsed on the ground. He ran headfirst into something that, like a wall, or a door, something. And it just, and he just fell. He just fell hard, like bounced backwards and fell on the ground. And uh, that's when they thought the group of them started, you know, like a, a group exorcism for this guy. And eventually, the demon was cast out, and and he, uh, you know, he became saved. Right now, I know people can say, "Hey, that's religious. Are you promoting religion?" No, I'm just saying I'm not the only one that has experienced something like this, and it is a spiritual battle between good and evil. And we here in this plane are oftentimes uh, ignorant of it because we can't see it, and they the, obviously the the fallen ones don't want us to know what they're doing or why. So, again, I when I heard it, I only caught part of it. And then I looked up his book and a spiritual warfare and an invisible invasion. And I, and I read that chapter and I was like, man, uh, I know that's real. Cause I've experienced it. Maybe not exactly the way he did, but it was very, so similar. It just freaked me out because I thought, well, they're never going to give up, you know, clearly. Oh, and the other thing was he, he gives a lot of examples throughout history of cities within nations that have been captured and controlled by the dark side, these principalities and powers of the air um, that are, again, mostly vis invisible. But all they have to do is possess or puppet the so-called leadership, and everybody, most everybody will fall into line. 
So the examples were very stark, and I can't imagine – you can't just make up history. Of course, it's his opinion of how things went or why, but um, uh, he specifically said America has a problem in general that you know our cities have been hijacked. I guess I think we call them blue cities right now. Right. You know, typically you see the the crime rate has gone astronomical, and um, the lies too. It just so basically the dark side is they lie, cheat, steal, and kill because they're they have a need for energy, a dark energy that is emitted by our DNA when we hurt ourselves or others. So they're constantly manipulating us, and. Um, I wrote this first article called The Art of Spiritual Warfare and gave people resources to be able to better understand how this is playing out. Uh, then I realized, uh, because I, I have such a, an incredible database of, of stuff, that I needed to write a, a follow-up article called The Art of Psychological Warfare because you don't have to, uh, you don't have to kinetically do anything. I mean, you don't have to shoot somebody in order, if you can control their thoughts, it's, that's probably the best thing, you know, as far as warfare is concerned. So um, I, I'm writing that today. Uh, what is today? Thursday. Thursday, I, yeah. I know this is recorded, but Thursday, March 14th. Um, I added it to my substack, robertstanley.substack.com, I think. I don't know. Um, sorry. Let's see. I, I, I don't dial it up myself. What does it say here on the address? Sorry. Yeah, no yeah. worries. That's uh, substack. Yeah, robertstanley.substack.com. So the top one is going to be the art of physical war, excuse me, the art of spiritual warfare. Second one will be the art of psychological warfare. And then the third one is going to be the art of physical warfare. And uh, if you think you know everything about war, you better think again. I have some stuff that is going to absolutely boggle your brain. I'm not proud of the fact that I'm, for some reason, I get <laughs> I get the privilege of putting it out there. Um, but you know, somebody's got to do it. I, I'm not the only one. I'm just saying it's for some reason I have this knack or gift or whatever for, um, editing information in a way that's a, I distill it down a little bit, but also give you the opportunity to go as deep as you want. And, and, uh, <clears throat> I try not to get too um, judgmental or personal about it just putting the information out there. Yeah, I understand that. Um, but that's, that's always good to put your personal opinions in there as well. As long as you let the reader know that, uh, you know, this is how you distinguish some more, I guess you could say, um, subjective sort of, um, facts. And then, you know, put your, um, two cents in there. Maybe that might be the proper ingredient of doing this. Who knows? But mm -hmm. the, uh, invisible invasion by uh, Thomas Horn. Great book, by the way. I had Did heard about it? it, yes. Yeah, oh, wow. I, I read it a, a, quite a bit ago. This right. first was released, I think, back in like 1998. And I remember yeah, and reading. it's not new. Yeah, not it's new. not a new book at all, but quite relevant here in uh, 2024, still to this day. Hmm. And there's some uh, good things in there. Of course, uh, chapter four, the victor's master weapons is always a pretty interesting read. And yeah, I know this isn't exactly a Christian show. Uh, uh, most people out there listening to this know that already. And I myself am not a Christian. Uh, uh, Robert, I don't really think you consider yourself a Christian either, though. I, I don't really, like, I'm not religious, period. Yeah. I know all about religion. Uh, I consider myself to be a spiritual person or soul, whatever. But the problem with religion is that it's uh, it can be hijacked or has been. Right. And this whole thing about, like, for example, all the, factions of Islam or Judaism or Christianity and that they they literally are at odds with each other. And as I told you before, I, I, this is kind of my theme going forward is um, everything here is all about separation from source and from others yeah. and from self. As, and it, it has grown from something, a rather simple idea or a concept experiment to something that is now extremely complex and unsustainable. So, um, uh, I'm just, look, I, I'm not, I'm not here to, we're not, we can't solve all the problems in, in the world right, right now, just sitting here talking about it. 
but I do feel that um, knowing about a problem is the first step towards solving it. That's true. You're right about that. You are definitely right about that, uh, Robert. And uh, yes, if anybody wants to read that book, I mean, you've also offered a, a link there, by the way, anyone to read this mm -hmm. uh, PDF, or you can just buy the book. I'm sure there's a few places out there if you want the hardback cover. Uh, I'm sure you could find the copy quite easily. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, all these PDFs that I put up, um, I found on the internet. I don't make them myself. But if they're out there already, I'm just giving you links to the files and also links to, like Michael saying, you can go to Amazon and get any of these books. Usually they're still in print. Um, and I know most people don't read, especially books that are nonfiction, but um, I do. I mean, well, they'll, they'll, they'll hear the audio version. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That yeah, always works. That too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in any case, I'm sure that's why talk radio is so popular because most people don't read and or specifically they don't analyze the situation. They want to be told what's going on or what somebody thinks. And uh, it's just easier to kind of piggyback on that. I I know that like um, some people have written to me and said, well, back in 2017, you said this and on a, that this show and uh, or whatever. And I'm like, right. well, <laughs> thank goodness I was able to grow beyond that. Um, uh, why don't you ask me where I'm at now? I mean, I appreciate people writing to me, but it's, it's, um, uh, they need to keep up, I guess. Or if they can't, um, don't judge me by what I said or wrote years ago, because obviously I, I keep evolving or hopefully learning and, um, have a clearer understanding about the context of things and how it relates to all of us, not just me. That's right. And there was a weird synchronicity between us before I even uh, booked you on the program. <laughs> you know, you had written this article, Robert. Oh, my God. And uh, as I was uh, preparing a, a bit of a, a banner here for us, you know, I thought yeah. maybe I should use a very popular sort of a picture from, you know, the movie They Live. And then I look at your article and uh, you're using the same reference. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. Well, yeah, that's even before you asked me exactly. to come on the show again. Yeah, we were obviously thinking on the same wavelength about um, movies like that, a mass awakening of the to the blindness of humanity and how that left us vulnerable to manipulation um, by these entities in the movie. They look, I don't know what those things are, like uh, zombie apocalypse. They, they just just creepy supposedly aliens but they look just like us they live among us and yet if you can really see what they look like it's it's very hideous it's it's like a living dead yeah these are like uh parasites of sorts mm -hmm. oh okay i didn't send you that book uh oh there you go again michael um the next <laughs> installment uh psychological the art of psychological warfare actually maybe i did send you this book uh, this is your brain on parasites I don't believe you have. Okay. Yeah, okay. I've never heard of that one. All right. Yeah, one, I was talking with Niche about something yeah. offline, and she said something about parasites. So uh -huh. for some reason, I don't know. I ended like I said, this happens. I'm like a lightning rod. When keyword searching just leads me to the most incredible uh, d downloads, and literally, I. I figure, well, I, I found it for a reason. I know it's out there in the domain, public domain, but when you start to collect certain things and, and combine them with other things, it, there's a, a synergistic effect. And um, again, this it, most people have no idea the, the level of manipulation that parasites have, not only in the body, but especially in the brain, not just humans, but it, it can, it, it, we know it affects all kinds of life forms. It literally hijacked the the, the nervous system or whatever and cause cravings and other crazy behavior um, in the host. Okay, so anyway, um, yeah, this is your brain on parasites. What's the subtitle? Sorry. No Good worries. Uh, how tiny creatures manipulate our behavior and shape society. Okay, so this is not a small book as far as the impact. I mean, it's, it's an easy read, but it's like scary because the implications are just mind-boggling literally because you're, you're you're looking at 
you're, it's basically like a mirror. You're saying, oh, wait, I, I, if I have parasites, they're causing me to do what? <laughs> right. And that's usually referred to as, I guess you could say, the voices in my head or mm -hmm. just these thoughts, uh, basically. Yep. Yeah. And people give into that, you know, and they do yeah. what the voices say in their head. Right. Which oh. is not healthy to do. You, you should never really act initially yeah. on your first reaction, uh, either emotionally or spiritually, some would say. Or physically uh, too. Or physically, like, oh, right. I'm craving, I'm craving alcohol or right. ice cream or cigarettes, whatever that those cravings, yes, typically are coming from somewhere some, else, right? Yes, yeah, something else. And it's usually in us or around us. And that's the thing. Again, what I, I saw my God. was a spiritual parasite feeding on this boy and his his grandparents and um <laughs> which I interrupted, not knowing the consequences of that. But I mean uh, again, I'm not the only one. Clearly, a lot of people like Tom Horn and others that they've all, we all have experienced the same thing and kind of describe it in the same way, similarly. Trying to the, the thing is trying to unravel it too, because obviously they are masters of manipulation covertly. And even when you catch them at it, they don't want to admit it. Obviously, you know this is the thing that, uh, uh, especially politicians. They will actually pretend to be ignorant in order to deflect blame or not take responsibility for their behavior. It's it's pretty mind-boggling just to think that some person could actually live with themselves. Obviously, they they don't feel guilt or emotion. We could we could call them psychopaths, but that was so that doesn't mean anything. It just means they've lost their empathy. And to me, that is an illness because it's not normal. It's not healthy. Right. Lots of them make moves that they don't really believe is going to impact uh, X, Y, and Z, in other words. Well, they're in denial, obviously. And that's another thing that the parasites are really good at is uh, blinding us. Okay, so in the first article, I, one of the things I... I show there is a diagram i've done this before but it's uh, in case people don't know we only see a fraction of the known um spectrum of light right i mean it's ridiculous i don't know what the exact percentage is but it's like let's just say three percent just sort of like what they say oh we only use three percent of our brain well we can only use three percent of our our vision the rest of it is beyond our range of visions our, our hearing is also very limited also so basically we're kind of deaf dumb and blind sort of it's it's not a good position to be in and i know there's ways to go beyond that but like deaf, I said, dumb and blind i like that <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> yeah. yeah like tommy the 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 um uh, the opera right? right sure um but at some point i think we have to move past that i mean it would be nice it, it might actually be extremely beneficial and who knows maybe that's why the you know so-called good extraterrestrials are not interacting with us directly is because we're just incapable and it's not even about you know intellect or just really uh, well i'm glad it, you mentioned that because a lot yeah. of people out there they've been believing for the longest times uh, that there is a faction of uh, aliens out there you know you mm -hmm. first heard of those those channelers back in the day during yeah. the um the hippie era back in the 60s and 50s the, the, too and the 50s too but they were channeling the galactic federation and uh, yeah. all these other uh groups out there basically relaying the same message earth is in trouble mm -hmm. humans need to watch their ass or the uh, things are going to go go south in other words that's always been the underlying message from the aliens and uh, what i mean by that is the whole faction of aliens what what i'm um what I'm trying to relay here is they lots of people out there they they claim that uh there's a, a specific uh, alien faction out there that had made deals with their own government for uh, all kinds of different purposes and that's why things are the way they are you're right but um the book that I provide for people uh who haven't read something beyond what Sitchin wrote is um the shining ones and uh, that's it, that gives you a whole nother look at the so-called Anunnaki and how their relationship with us is ancient. And it's based on quite a few lies or layers of lies. 
and manipulation, um, not just genetic, but that they literally turned us into their slaves and we're still there. And it's, it's I heard Daniel Sheehan talking about this the other day. He says, yeah, if they wanted to, they could just uh, land and, and talk to us and then the secrecy be over, but they don't want to do that. I'm like, okay, well, so whose fault is that, Daniel? <laughs> you know, right. are you going to blame us? It's yeah. like, oh yeah, you, we were asking to be raped. It's like, <laughs> <clears throat> um, so it's just uh, it. It's a really goofy situation that we're in right now, but I do think it's coming upon us to at least yeah. make an effort, um, individually and collectively, because you know uh, we're in a, you know we're in another election year, which yeah. I find farcical. Honestly, I just like religion. I'm not political um, because I just don't see a benefit to it. I know everybody thinks it's essential to have centralized government, but it's again, if we're being puppeted from another dimension, yeah, that is literally all around us, and that's um, what that's what a lot of uh, people claim. Yeah, well, I mean, that's in know. the book, in the book, the shining ones, it says that they don't come from another planet; they come from another dimension, dimension. of sorts. Yeah, and yeah, by the way, no. that's what what's also talked about by. Uh, that guy, uh, the the hippie from back in the day, the Sheldon Idol. That's actually more in the in the that uh, happened in the late the early nineties, rather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that too. Yeah, it's been. I know people talk about it. Yeah. But actually, quantifying it is very difficult, especially in a public way, because if our officials are, I mean, it kind of makes sense too, because they're in total denial about so just about everything, especially right. when it comes to this so called alien question and. Uh, advanced technologies and, and and they just cannot be honest about anything and i so why would i well why would i it's hard to take to, it seriously yeah and, and right I, it, it, yes i don't want to invest my time or my reputation or my soul into thinking that or feeling like oh it's you know t blue team versus red team come on <laughs> no it's a much more complex than that <laughs> it is it is and so what what the heck can we do about it uh um, is first of all, I've, I've said this before about being calm, kind, creative and courageous, but right. th th increasing one's resonance is fine. But you know, the fact is if you're still on a battlefield, that's, that's a problem. And, um, whatever you can do, and I'm speaking from experience now because I went through some crazy times during the holidays, um, disengage from the dark side. They really want us to engage with them uh, on like uh, combat and if, if it is just distraction or you know and the main thing is they have to keep us divided that's how they re we remain conquered but they really really are focused on pissing us off a lot of the times so that we cannot just relax and be happy and healthy so disengaging from that means, for me anyway, uh, I had to take a complete break from everything. The well, yeah, me, yeah, but especially the internet because I don't watch TV, or especially not the news. Why so would you? Official news. Yeah, right. I don't like being lied to um, or manipulated. But so the main thing was um, I started listening to comedy a lot because at least, yeah, a lot of it's stupid. But sure, at least when I had a little downtime, it was a way of disengaging from the dark side because the, you don't you know you don't criminals don't do stand-up comedy uh, comedy right i mean uh, not that i know of <laughs> right they yeah. don't they don't have the capacity to just joke around and make people feel good because when you laugh you i mean it's hard to be pissed it's actually almost impossible to be pissed off if you're laughing a lot that's true it's better to be pissed off than to be uh pissed on <laughs> yeah exactly Actually, there was a Star Trek like that when something about the Archons oh. and um, Captain Kirk figured it out. Oh, he, they were trying to make uh, the Star Trek guy, the uh, sorry, the um, Enterprise guys were fighting with the Vulcans or something, whatever, Klingons. And they were, uh, they finally, Kirk says, you know what? We just have to uh, laugh at them. Be you know, like you and I, we're going to work together against this, this common enemy. And, the, and it was just, it was pretty damn funny. The way they, they figured it out was, uh, 
well, yeah, we're just not going to give in. We're not going to do what you want, which is to keep fighting each other. We're going to become friends and we're just going to laugh at you because you're so stupid. Right. This is, this is your, this is your whole existence is, is to make us pissed off and fight. Yeah. That was, it was an interesting episode. That's right. And uh, TV, another great example of uh, the mind parasite. Mm -hmm. That's how it all begins too. Well, Hollywood in general is, I, and I've said this a, too, probably too many times. I think, you, I about, think even the book also mentions Hollywood. Which one? Uh, the the um, spiritual warfare. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the well, last chapter there. Um, so it's, most people think Hollywood is about entertainment, but it's actually about entrainment, which means to control someone's mind, our thoughts or emotions. And um, like you're on a train, you know, when you get on a train, you're not driving a damn train. You just going somewhere. Well, it's, it's right. that's, that's what it's like. They, they basically get you to, it's like, Oh, come with us. Let's go on a fantasy adventure. It's called a movie and, and, you know, or whatever sitcom. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what's going on right now Yeah, in real it, time. Yeah. We're just here for the ride. Basically. Well, I mean, look, we're, obviously we're learning something. We're, we are I, learning something, but going back to what you were saying about uh, voting and uh, the election, uh, I want to ask you this. Do you actually mm -hmm. believe in the validity of a voting for a sitting president to any capacity? Well, obviously it's rigged like everything else. Yeah, uh, right, e right. Even prior to all this other nonsense, uh, you know, people just kind of got wise to it because it was so blatant. And th that's not new. It's just the level of technology and the, um, right. it, it's so obvious now everything. And I was, t I was shown that back in 2013 that everything was going to be revealed. I didn't realize though, that the dark side itself was going to come out of the closet because it was, it felt desperate, you know, it was, it, they, they, you know, the sprays, Oh, they doubled down. Well, they keep doubling down and, and it just isn't working because more and more of us are waking up and we can see right through the lies. Like, you know, kind of like the wizard of Oz, the, the curtain has been pulled back. It really has. And some people and... really believe in this though. <laughs> they, they believe their vote actually counts and yeah, they'll guilt trip you for it too. Yeah. But less and less that's it. Right. It, okay. So the, all right. But then, then what, uh, can we self govern? Um, well, you have to want to do it first of all. Some people say live off the grid. Yeah, yeah, but you're still within a nation, within a county, within a city. I'm not trying to live off the the grid, by the way. No, I know. I'm just saying yeah. if you. I know you. How, I know. I know. But I just want disengage? the people to know that. Yeah, really? uh, yeah. How could you disengage? This is true. That's why I always talk to people that claim to be an anarchist. Yet <laughs> they have a Netflix account. They have a. You know, you can get the point. But yeah, it's yeah. it's a little ridiculous, Robert. Uh, I I know I totally get what you're saying, but you know how some people are out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Uh, we're all suffering to some degree of parasitism. I think that's the word, or possession. And uh, you know the saying that uh, possession is nine tenths of the law. And I'm going to say most of us are possessed <laughs> is uh, right. by some something or some group. We, I loosely always refer to them as the dark side that feel that we're their property. So if they can claim possession of us within their system, because it is their system, you know, Christians say this, this the, the God of this world is Satan, which just translates to adversary. Adversary what? God, obviously. So the, the adversary of God is ruling this world, and, and we're supposed to somehow vote our way out of that? Not well, not at the polling right. place, not at that freaking polling place, because that's rigged. And so, where do you go? You're going to go to church? Well, okay, if that works for you, fine. I mean, do you really feel liberated? You, I mean, have you found sovereignty spiritually by going and and following a an organized religion that says all other religion is wrong? I mean, that's this that right there is uh, dystopia. It it. <clears throat> They're sowing the seeds of discontent, all of them, in my opinion, if they do that, if they can't be inclusive and find unity, then it's a fault. It's just false. That's my opinion. That's why I don't participate. <laughs> no, I get you. I always come at it from a, a different angle, though, because, you know, I'm not a 
Republican. I'm not a liberal. I'm not anything. Oh, you conservative? No. Okay. I'm I'm okay. nothing. I, I I don't represent uh, any sort of organization to uh, any varying degree. I, I have no allegiance to any of them. I'm an outsider to that sort of world. Okay. And quite frankly, I don't want to be a part of that world. Yeah. Uh, I got to be honest. It's interesting to talk about, but in the end, it's just a form of uh, mental masturbation, just like everything else is here in, in the spectrum of uh, talk. Well, it's also a form of mind control because if it gets you that to too. remain divided from your neighbor or your family or whatever, or a nation, a whole nation is divided now, polarized like never before because, you know, it's, a, well, <laughs> oh, they've got all kinds of reasons for it, I, but none of that stuff, uh, I, okay, so a phrase that goes out a lot is uh, if they didn't have double standards, they'd have none at all, and I, I think that applies to both, to both parties are corrupt. You know, there's some good people in both parties, just like there's good people in, in the Pentagon, but the, the Pentagon in general is totally corrupt. Right. You know, and all the the, the government um, military contractors. I think well, people they, are starting to see that now. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, some people more than ever, because obviously the internet shows like this, we, we can discuss it for now. Um, right, but, for now. But, man, okay, so... Uh, if they can't have their way, they're not just going to give up. They have contingency plans. They, the dark side is really uh, obsessed, committed to their path. They, they don't have a plan B as far as I'm concerned. I, I haven't seen it. Uh, they're not going to suddenly grow a conscience or find their empathy or whatever. So um, this thing about Skynet, you know, again, we keep referencing movies. It's because, real, though. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's called predictive programming for a reason because they're they're basically conditioning the public to like, oh, well, yeah, uh, artificial intelligence with you know robots that are for the military or whatever. Oh, that's that's fiction. Yes, it is until it isn't. You know, and it <laughs> we're it, it's way further along than most people realize because a lot of that stuff is. Uh, off the books, it's black budget. They right. can't admit it because, well, they use stolen funds or what they call, sorry, they call it misappropriated. It's a nice way of saying it. It's a stolen. great way of, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah, well, that's their terminology, not mine. Just, um, But anyway, they, um, they do have technology that's really advanced, like it can read your mind. That's right. My mind. And which is, again, it's, it's all part of the that psychological warfare is part of the spiritual warfare and ultimately reaches down into the physical. And that's usually where most people dwell and don't look beyond that. So <clears throat> this conversation, I wasn't expecting to have it quite yet because I'm uh, putting together this um, three articles that are all related. So there'll, there'll be links. Every article page will link to the other if you want to, if you really want to go and see the different dynamics because it's a multi-layered thing. It's interdimensional. We are interdimensional beings. Most of us don't know that. Therefore, we don't act accordingly. So uh, we're extremely vulnerable to manipulation. But it, it's got to end at some point, in my opinion. Right. Um, and it's not going to come from politicians no. or priests or, God forbid, lawyers. No, they need all these things, those people you mentioned. They need the television. And yeah. I got to say, what a time to be alive, though, Robert. AI is getting <laughs> better and better each and every oh, month. Yeah. And, of course, Putin is back to uh, threatening a nuclear holocaust again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we both know that wouldn't end well for our Russian friend. Mm. We've got much more advanced weaponry than they do, even though they claim that they have more modern. And uh, he kept emphasizing the word modern. Uh, mm -hmm. technology but you know we have things up our sleeve that they have no idea even exist well yeah even the public doesn't like i said that it's too a, it's compartment like what they call special access programs it's not just flying saucers or whatever these things are um they're not really saucers but right anyway anyway the advanced uh truly advanced aerospace program obviously they have weapon systems and like i was saying before if you could all right, so you've got a weapon, but if you can read your enemy's thoughts, uh, yeah, it's next level. They are 
it, if and if they cannot read yours, well, then you've got the high ground for sure. And, you know, as far as militarily, that's yeah. Uh, and th but they're, they're and that's one of the reasons they're not going to admit it. And I'm sure this is why they cannot uh, go forward with so-called disclosure because it's going to open a whole Pandora's box of revelations of, you know, some people say med beds and all that crap. I don't, yeah, I don't believe that either, but we do have a weird history as well. I mean, you could just look at yeah. the Stargate project for a good example. <laughs> I mean, what was that? Yeah. What was that about? I mean, we just, uh, you just mentioned the whole knowing what your enemy is going to do. And that's pretty much what our government was trying to do back in uh, 78. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty well, wild. They're still, they're and they're still, still doing, doing it. it. Yeah. Yeah. But I think they've succeeded. So, okay. The other thing is weird is it's back in the news is that uh, flight MH370, I think it is. Oh yeah. I remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the Malaysian flight that disappeared, nobody could find the wreckage or the, you know, the dead bodies. Um, I think I did send you that, uh, the, uh, different people. Yeah, was that guy, you did. I think Forbes, his last name is Forbes. I don't know if he's related, but he'd somehow somebody leaked a, a military satellite imagery to him of the flight being uh, shadowed by orbs or spherical something or others. And also that they were doing an infrared scan of the plane. I saw and that, that yeah. something hot in there. He said it was lithium batteries. I, I totally disagree, but it, it, um, I think it was nuclear or something similar to that and that they were doing, I wouldn't even call it an experiment. They were, pro they were testing, they were testing some, some very Seemed advanced like stuff. Some sort of weapon or teleportation yeah, it's device a teleporta of sorts. Well, okay. We don't know for sure where they went, but it will, <laughs> I'm, my guess is it was not here or now. Right. It, it could have been anywhere at any time. Yeah, they're gone though. That's what we know. <laughs> yeah, but they dis okay, long but gone. The, the video that was leaked is uh, astonishing because it's just like the stuff that um, was photographed over Washington D.C. In my investigation of Washington D.C., is that these things the military has known about this for a long time, but it's, right. in, in the fifties they were literally watching them disappear off radar and visually, and then popping back in to our airspace. And there's no way to do that unless you're using a wormhole or whatever you want to call it, portal, Stargate, Einstein, Rosen bridge. I don't care. Whatever. It's a, it's a transportation yeah. uh, technology that supposedly we are working on whether or not we have it or not. I don't know. Maybe they got vaporized too, but it, it, it really looked interesting the way they went into this white, um, mm, uh, it not a cloud. It's like a, just a field of energy. That's what I, in front yeah, of the craft. And then right. they just poofed out. It's it just, wow. They just poofed out, man. They just it went in there and was gone. It's pretty mysterious. Well, um, so I don't know why they're bringing it up again, unless they just need to, uh, it's a way of deflecting. The, Possibly. The, yeah. Cause that damage guy's control. Information, yeah. That guy's yeah. information go went viral and, um, a lot of people, I don't, so what? I mean, it's like, what are you going to do about it? It's like a dog chase on a car. Yeah, I can't really do much. No. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm almost sure I know what happened, but, but the question, bigger question is why they would do that with all the civilians on board. Ah, yes, there were scientists there with top secret yeah. you know, technology, but um, it caused a huge controversy. There's All eyes were looking for that thing, couldn't find it. I doubt they ever will. And if they do, they're never going to tell us the truth. Obviously, it does seem like damage control, but in a very strange way. It's a very, very strange um, case and circumstance. Uh, there's a lot of uh, news about that. And yes, go look that up yourself, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know more about that. And uh, obviously, we're never going to truly know the whole story. And that, that's the problem. We don't really get all the facts. Even the main stories are full of uh, nonsense. I was going to say another word, but <laughs> you get the point. And, you know, we, we've got such advanced weaponry. And, of course, we have plenty that's powered by AI these days. Uh, drones that have been engineered to kill certain people and targets. And, uh, the, mm. the article you recently uh, sent me was quite fascinating. But that one, of course, specifically was not made by someone that's a part of our own government in that 
that was already loaded with like AI facial recognition. And that was created yeah. for a video game, according to the article. Yeah. But in the end, we kind of all recognized how easy it would be for a terrorist to basically utilize these things. And I agreed with him. Yeah. But a commercial drone can be programmed to do a lot of uh, crazy things. And these are just one of the many tools out there that anyone, anyone can use. Uh, but again, no match for what the government has. And I have to remind people of that just in case anyone thinks they can go heads up against them, like in, let's say, like a Waco, Texas situation, Robert. <laughs> yeah. It's out of control. Some people out there online, though, that, you know, they're very gun hole and they're saying, well, come here. You know, we're going to if the police comes or, you know, the, the feds come, they're going to have to deal with me. And I'm just thinking, <sighs> Lord. You know, they're just going to send in a drone and wipe your ass out. Hey, well, they don't even have to get that close. They've got uh, beam weapons. Well, that too. You know, they can target you remotely from uh, with, you know, your cell phones and, and any other electronics. If it gets to that point, that satellites. is. Yeah, well, if they feel that there is a group of targets that they want to eliminate, they don't even have to get close. Right. That's what I'm saying. And uh, I forget the lady that I guess she was, I think, married to General Stubblebine. But anyway, she said, yeah, they that's stupid because uh, they can melt your eyeballs from a mile away. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. It's just, and I'm sorry I'm laughing. It's not funny. It's just like, come on, that's that's not even a contest when uh, faux Biden. Well, I mean, that is kind of funny, there. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Maybe that's all those people and they live were from. They they survived that kind yeah. of stuff, but they kind of look like it. Um, they're missing some facial features there. But um, so you know, when our fake president was saying something about, uh, uh, yeah, you want to take us on? We've got F-16s or something. Uh, and you're you're bringing up a good point. Well, it, they got a lot more than that, and of course they're not going to say it. But if it really push comes to shove, then um. I okay, so replacement migration is a real problem. Uh, some people say it's an evasion. I don't know. We're all here on the same planet, but yeah, they're not following the rules. They're being um, brought in intentionally by the United Nations, and which is to me is a satanic operation. Right. It always has been, always yeah. will be. So I'm not surprised by anything like that. But the problem is a lot of these so-called uh, immigrants are now that are military age are being brought into like um either the military our military uh or their uh, uh police departments like in los angeles are hiring them which i find they're hiring they're, them there it's extremely offensive to say the least because they broke the law to get into the country and now they're enforcing our laws i mean really that's just <laughs> Like I said, if they didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have any. It's it it's just next level um, deception, and they're it's delusional too. I mean, come on, it's you, everybody that looks at this that has half a brain left. They're they're saying this is th this is not just illogical. This is completely illegal, immoral, unethical, and um, the problem is how do you how do we resolve it? because it's so systemic i'm not sure it can be yeah so, i'm not quite sure how we're gonna come to a solution for this i mean this has been a <laughs> an issue for the longest time yeah okay since right. i was like in school no it goes way thousands of years well back. even longer than that but i mean i'm i'm, I'm referring to just as being a little kid and seeing oh, yes. this this sort of uh thing be such an issue for the longest time and no one after all these years has come up with any kind of valid uh, solution to this issue but well, i mean everybody wants to come to america let's be honest yeah i i know but you can't look but i'm not saying let's let's all bring them all in that's not definitely not what i no i, I understand but in here but you could try and get into mm -hmm. any country like that oh yeah it's not you're gonna get kicked out or uh it's not even the same yeah <laughs> yeah I, they wouldn't when i was in hong kong i had to have a visa and when i tried to get a visa to go in the mainland they said no we don't want you in here uh because i said something about journalists and that's that's a kiss of death i didn't realize that at the time um so right. whatever you know, it, it's, I'm just saying that you can't do that. And in fact, you can't even get a visa to leave 
China unless the government wants you to. And the fact that there's so many of them are getting in, like they have disposable income and visas and stuff that they can go directly to Central America and then trek all the way up <laughs> into, into uh, um, yeah, United States from Central America. That's just, yeah, it's, it's all organized. And um, so... But it's it's because the, if I understand this correctly, the our loyal patriotic military would not fire on its own citizens, even if they were ordered to by whomever in the Pentagon or at the White House. So you bring in military age people who would be willing to do whatever because they've been given granted citizenship for their service in the military. Mm. And that's that's legal. It's it's not ethical, but whatever. It's that's a, a part of the equation. Then if you can bring in on top of that, and they've already it's, it's all over the news. I think I sent you some of it. The um, yeah, I saw that. The and it's not just the killer drones. It's also the uh, um what it would. Okay, hang on. Let me see if I can find what I show, showed you. Uh, no, can't. Anyway, um, it was. They look like regular military aircraft, but they're, they're, they're flown by artificial intelligence. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. There's those a lot of, like, yeah, that's really, been, mm -hmm, do they call those drones too? I don't think they so. do actually do. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, that's really predator confusing. drones. They're fully okay. autonomous. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, they look, the, the ones I thought I sent you was they look just like regular military. They, in other words, they would fly in formation with aircraft that are piloted, but these are not piloted right, by right. humans. Right. Okay, so that's not really a drone. That's a military aircraft that is. Uh... And it said it used the word Skynet. Oh, geez, I don't have my. Well, phone DARPA in front does of me, uh, actually. They do have a Skynet in existence, yeah. by the way, which is uh, <laughs> ironic because you know people say that doesn't exist. Well, oh, actually, yeah. then why does DARPA have the rights to that? Uh, yeah. So I mean, or, there is that. I mean, let's be honest. I don't know if things will ever end up like the movie Terminator, but no, the movie I hope not. that movie is almost like a warning, though. Uh, a bit of a blueprint. Yeah, you they know, call the, that battle plans. The it, evolution it, of consciousness, the second coming of Christ, per se. You know, man uh, versus the machine. Right. Uh, this what we're talking about. It's like what you were describing. In other words, is techno telepathy. In other words, brain computer mm -hmm. interfaces. Yeah. And these things have uh, been created uh, long ago already. And that's right. what that's what you're describing, and what was in that article. But yeah, you could remotely control these, basically, uh, with your brain. Right, that was in the movie Foxfire. I, that I do believe exists, but it's it, the other thing is that it's just uh, the <laughs> the level of development of synthetic biology and artificial intelligence is really what they're talking about is artificial life forms. Right, that's what they that's what they're hoping for uh, eventually. Right. That's what's that's what's going to be around, and we have all these uh, well, not us, but uh, everyone else yeah. in the in the blank budget area you already have these sort of humanoid robots out there right but we're, we're pretty much getting the breadcrumbs right now because you know we're already living in this dystopian society uh, basically yeah. but this is only in my opinion this is kind of only the beginning as to what's to come you know people are already walking around with the apple vision pro <laughs> and those things aren't really enjoyable according to those who use them but mm -hmm. soon enough, we won't need to put any device in our heads to access that sort of thing. We already have the Neuralink implant coming soon, which is what we're talking about. Brain computer interfaces. Yeah. That's well, what that's all that a... crap is. And it's, it's, it's incredible though, Robert, we are essentially playing God, but I think one of these days, it's only a matter of time before people will even shift their pets to fully like communicate with them. Oh my God. Uh, can you imagine? But people, <laughs> I'm telling you, people already chip them. So this is basically the, the the first step. The future really freaks me out. In other words, Robert, mm -hmm. I'll stop talking. No, it's a good thing. You're, <laughs> I'm glad you're doing it because uh, it's causing me to have all kinds of thoughts. I already I, got anxiety I, just well, thinking about this. Again, no, it's that doesn't help you or anybody. If you you got to remain well, you don't have to, but it helps if you're in a good way. Calm. I'm excited for it. Yeah, that there's good. I know. Well, you're doing. Hey, but you're being proactive. It's crazy least. to me. It is. It's a form of insanity. Yes, this this world, this universe is <clears throat> anything but normal. It's uh, yeah, it's abnormal. So the 
synthetic biology is uh, one thing, but it's when you combine it with artificial intelligence, it becomes a synthetic or artificial life form. And the neural link is not necessary. Um, we can communicate with these things without it, but if you really want to interface fully, it, it's just simply breathe the smart dust and you're in. It's it or take an inject, injection. You don't need to have something implanted in your brain, man. I'm telling you, that's not how it works. Um, that's that. In fact, I think it's a huge distraction. I think we talked about Musk before. He to me, he seems like just a con man. Well, he is. Many. I mean, he didn't really create Tesla or anything. He just bought right. it. Yeah, and same with Gates. He's just he, right. Uh, yeah, a useful idiot. Uh, this supposedly is a genius, but he acts like an idiot. <laughs> It has all this money or more dollars than cents, I think is what I used to say about people like that. But right. they're, they're just puppets. And that's what goes back to this whole thing about spiritual warfare. How many of the so-called oligarchs or geniuses or whatever, world leaders are actually, right. yeah, they're just puppets that are manipulating the masses. Yeah, that's, a, that's the problem. It's a big problem, and again, I don't have all the answers, but um, well, at least we can talk about the problem and hopefully hopefully find some way to overcome it. And if nothing else, I think, I really feel, I mean, it worked for me during the time when I was recovering from a serious case of sciatica. Right. And was unable to sleep for two or three weeks. <clears throat> Isn't that fun? <laughs> It's amazing what happens with your brain when that happens. Uh, but anyway, I um, I realized that the only way to fix it was to disengage. And uh, obviously, I can't do it 100%, but whatever degree I could disengage from the dark side. Uh, it's was, healthy to do so. Yeah, it allowed me to uh, heal Yeah, and become stronger from the healing and um, a little more resilient. Because, you know, it's like everybody knows what's at this point. They should know what the game that's being played. But you become more sensitive to it once you've recovered from it. And uh -huh. I, usually, too, it, you build up an immunity to it. Exactly. You know? Yeah. You, you sort of have to, uh, you know, uh, people like myself, uh, you and others, you know, we have to sort of uh, read a lot of, of things that are going on and... Yeah, sort of uh, talk about these sort of things. And of course, some people out there will overreact. And that's when the issues uh, occur. That's when they start acting out. And that's well, the yeah, problem. That, that uh, It is part of the, the, but it's a process. It's a protocol that was set in place by the dark side to keep us divided, distracted, and ultimately um, uh, useful to them. So this is an important conversation we're having for people that are starting to realize that it, it, it's, it's futile to try and fight with the dark side because there, there, there's no way to win. They, they're not going to um, negotiate for peace. You know, peace and prosperity is not part of their lexicon. They, that's not their purview of life. They're, they're parasitic. Right, and this all ties into the whole transhumanism agenda that we yes. are currently facing right now. So this is the spiritual yeah. battle that you're describing. Yeah, it's ev mm. it has evolved to this point now where they are at least out in the open saying, yeah, we're, we're going to use technology to enslave everybody permanently forever, and um, you'll be happy about it. Now, I don't think so. Well, some people might. I'm not. And...